this, uh, this is the beginnings of what we hope will become a, uh, um, a large representative uh, collection reflecting the, uh, the uh, Taiwan American community. This is part of the Chinese community that is, is uh, often overlooked and, and uh, I'm trying to avoid the word undocumented, but uh, <laughs> it's not, not well documented, let's say, where um, our hope is that for all of the contributions of the uh, uh, culturally and politically, uh, socially that, that uh, are affected by this community, that we can have a, a a, a permanent archive that will that will promote the research and uh, and uh, uh, grow into a grow into a much larger. Effort. So uh, this is a very this is just the very beginnings, and I, I should say that Joanne has is the impetus has given the impetus to this, and in in just a few months she has put together this this uh, uh, really pretty pretty, pretty impressive uh, collection of materials. So. Uh, uh, the library is is uh, uh, now I think committed to, to making it a, a real uh, a real ongoing effort, and uh, we're hoping to to tap uh, resources that uh, families and organizations might have stored up and um, perhaps have not realized how how important they are historically and for for documenting the experiences of this community. So uh, our program for today, well, I'm just going to open up for um, people to mingle around and take a look at some of the materials that we've been able to collect, um, primarily through my father here, Gong Shen, um, and through the community at large. So um, feel free to take a look around. I'll explain a little, in a little bit a little bit more of our efforts and things that we've been able to do, and then um, we'll also open it up for questions. But for now, feel free to take a look through, um, just broadly speaking, it's all collected from the Taiwanese American community here. Um, there are some places where um, they came from other parts of the North American counties community, but over there on the far end is uh, some materials that are in the church organization in Ta for Taiwanese dialect, and then there's some materials of different newsletters that were written by Taiwanese Americans throughout the nation. Um, <coughs> over in the middle, there's a little bit more um, uh, about churches and religions and different types of ministries that were in North America. Um, if you're from USC, what's cool is there's actually a student organization report for USC about the foremost and Trojans right in the middle over there. So that's a nice historical tie into USC. And then over here are some newspapers, and I'll announce a little bit more of our issues. It's a research institution of institutions, museums, archives, libraries across LA that wanted to hi highlight LA history. And so I came on with special collections and uh, we were able to come up with a project. So Claude Zachary over there, as well as my, uh, as well as the head of special collections, Maria, uh, who wasn't able to make it today, uh, were flexible enough to be able to, for us to be able to talk out what kind of project that I wanted to highlight in LA history and to work on during my project in rotation here. So we reached out to Ken over in East Asian Library and we discussed how uh, the East Asian Library could grow in its collections of who they're representing. So uh, there is already a precedent of a Korean American Heritage Library and the Japanese American collections. Um, there isn't very much in the way of Chinese American uh, yet, but uh, one of the gaps that I wanted to focus on was the Taiwanese American history historical gap. And so I think Asian American history in general is uh, sometimes kind of combined into one history and uh, not very specified. I think within uh, Taiwanese history, a lot of times it gets lumped together with Asian American history at large or Chinese American history at large. Um, and I think one of the things that we want to focus here uh, within the project is to recognize that Taiwanese American history is a very particular history with its own set of language and culture and history and uh, it's something that we want to make sure that it's not lost in the documentary um, record. And so one of the things that we were hoping to do during this rotation is we did some research and looked at other universities and archives that had Taiwanese history and there wasn't, uh, although there are efforts for Taiwan studies um, or Taiwanese American uh, lectures or some on books, there isn't very much on Taiwanese Americans. Taiwanese, um, not just Taiwan studies or American studies, but Taiwanese American community here in the U.S. And so that's something that we want to focus on. There are certainly other universities with collections, but there isn't very much with a concerted effort 
to broadly collect in that area. And so that's one of the things that we want to do here. And we're excited to partner with other organizations and historical societies as well. Um, and then moving forward, one of the things we wanted to do was to outreach. And so uh, that's part of the effort of getting you all here. We do have uh, representatives here from FAPA, from uh, TaiwaneseAmerican.org, Pacific Times, Taiwanese American Historical Society, and uh, many other organizations that are here. And so we definitely are thankful that you were all able to make it. Um, just thinking about our uh, future goals moving forward is that I think um, part of the impetus to collect this history is that the time is now. Some of the earlier generations to come from Taiwan came in the late 50s, 60s, and 70s, and a lot of those people are holding on to their histories, but you know there are just environmental collections, people moving away, people downsizing. We want to make sure to capture that history before it's gone, and to make sure that um, whereas we want to have lectures and we want to have cultural program, I think to have the actual materials um, preserves that history so that generations from now people can draw their own conclusions, can look at this history and be able to, um, you know, be inspired for literature, for art, and for um, be able to make their own history, do their own historical research as well. Uh, one of the things I do want to clarify here is that this is an ongoing effort and it will continue for some time, but um, we are eager in in terms of um, going on with the momentum and trying to get grants, trying to get funding from um, the public or the community to be able to make this open access so that people can, people, not just academics, but people at large can actually access the community uh, community archives here that we've collected. So um, some of you who came in a little bit later, some of the things we've collected here are uh, the Taiwanese dialect uh, romanization here um, and some Bibles and uh, language uh, materials here. We also have some uh, cultural organizations that were started among the Taiwanese American community, some newsletters, as well as some um, religious materials, folk religions of Taiwan. And over there, we also have, um, right in the center over there, we have uh, a report of USC for most and Trojans. And so that's a link back to our USC alumni as well, and then some newspapers. Uh, one thing I do want to announce that's exciting that we're working on is um, Pacific Times with our with the editor here, Wen Cheng Lin. Um, we are in talks about having, uh, trying to digitize their, uh, basically their newspapers weekly from 1987 to 2010. That's uh, newspapers that have never been digitized that I think would be a great resource to people who are looking into that history. Or continuing, um, just this morning I was getting a call from Houston, from a historical society there, who had uh, a whole issue of uh, newsletters that were run from a uh, Muslim club back then as well. So definitely I think there is momentum from the community, from academics at large, and scholars and researchers and archivists. Um, I think there is a lot more conversation to be happening, and I think there's a lot more to grow. So um, one of the things I do want to clarify here as well is um, we are hoping to collect as widely and as large as the Taiwanese American community self-identified uh, would allow us to. And so I think um, part of the nice thing about a digital archive is that uh, sometimes people might be sentimental and might want to collect their own things, but the nice thing is that if we can scan it and we can digitize it and make sure that it's available, um, you know, then that we can always give the community their papers back, but at least we preserve that record and that document and the content that's uh, preserved there. The other thing is that I think as many of you are aware, um, Taiwanese American itself can um, vary in terms of how people identify it. So the way I'm identifying here today and the way that we talked about it is going off of uh, Asian American scholar, Professor Franklin Ng, who had defined Taiwanese American as anyone who was in Taiwan and then uh, became a US citizen here. So I think our job as archivists is to be self-reflective of the, of the information that we're carrying. So we do want to make sure that we represent all of Taiwanese Americans insofar as um, people identify themselves as Taiwanese American. So um, just for the Taiwanese people here, I'll just say a little bit in Taiwanese. Um, I would say in a matter of a mandang is it's actually not very good. But uh, for the Taiwanese people, uh, I don't know how to do it, but I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to do it. So, 
台湾人伫美国的历史是足足重要，啊，想要了解好。后代会当阁看，啊，所以遮个物件你看的是啊，总拢是为别人留起来伫因个厝里，因因囥后壁个一撮。啊，我感觉咱也会当即摆开始啊，开始甲人讲，开始摕人个物件伫遮，安尼，再遮个物件再袂啊，等掉去，啊，是予人予人全拢无看到。所以囥个大学遮上啊，好处就是讲会当。予大家人看，啊，予大家人看，讲这是重要，啊，安尼后摆会当留起来予别个人，啊，若要研究，也是若要来，啊，因为要写册，也是要安怎，会当拢来遮看。所以了，啊，你若要问在地，也是要问过去，也是要问啊，英语拢会使。I'm kind of curious. So, you know, you, we, we've talked before about uh, you know, the digitization of the materials, but what if we actually want find people at some point who want to actually donate things? Yeah. Where would it actually be stored, and <coughs> is it accessible after that point? Uh, the um, physical archives are stored in in uh, in folders and in boxes, and then and then they're shelved in uh, uh, either in space in in this library if they're being worked on, or in uh, a building a couple blocks away from from the university under under uh, control. So they can be recalled. Generally, they have to be uh, reserved ahead of time and, and examined in a, in a, uh, a reading room up in, uh, up in the special collections. But, uh, but they're they're open for anybody to to, to, to see. The advantage of, of digital library, uh, digital uh, archives, is that is that they can be seen obviously by by anybody. And, and um, uh, we operate on full open access. So so. Uh, Anybody in Taiwan, anybody anywhere could, could, uh, could uh, access. And then uh, part two of that question, um, I see some ideas and samples of what you collected here in terms of like uh, conference programs, uh, um, books, and other printed materials. Um, do you have a general scope of other things you're looking for? What if there are home videos or um, actual objects that are maybe more like art? Mm -hmm. You know, what what's your Focus, I guess. One well, of the nice things about about archives is that it, it's not edited and not generally <coughs> focused at all. Uh, it it's to, our our hope is to document as much of the community in 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 whatever facets and aspects uh, we can and are available. Um, we tend to shy away from physical too many physical objects. Uh, uh, we're not a not a museum, and don't have the facilities for storing too many things that are that are uh, of that nature. But but photographs, just about anything can be digitized. Photographs, moving images, audio tapes. Uh, we might at some point consider um, uh, promoting an oral history uh, series. Um, uh, and of course, documents, uh, flyers, and, and the sorts of things that you see here. Yeah, so uh, to build off of Ken's question, uh, Ken's answer to you, Chi, um, I think in terms of the, what you're saying about digitization and what about the physical objects, I think uh, I think that would be by case by case basis. In terms, um, I think part of the beauty of digital uh, archives is that it does take less space, and of course, space is at premium. I think if we were to take in take in the actual materials, I think that would be a conversation for us in terms of. How to fund that in terms of physical storage, um, in terms of having the space, and then also, uh, you know, I think as we work to digitize, part of the uh, what we would need to hire for, or what we would need to uh, get funding for, is to process it, the material. So it doesn't do anyone good to just scan it all and put it online. But you, we need to have the metadata, and we need to have the archival description for the materials. So I think uh, I think the storage question is one that we could take depending on what the materials were, uh, depending on how large, the size. Uh, depending on what the current uh, space storage situation is at USC at the time, but I think that's something that uh, Ken has, Ken and I have talked that is a potential possibility in the future. But we are focusing on the digital aspect in the meantime. Thank you, Mr. Lin. Hi, okay. Uh, very practical questions. <laughs> it's good to have this uh, initially this kind of big projects. I want we want to know how this project is going to be funded now and in the future, will this become part of the department's uh, 
a regular budget item or you, how are you going to support these projects? Um, it's always a big, it's a very good question. It's hard to, hard to really answer. Uh, a lot of times we, we will, uh, uh, with the prospect of, of some signal collection or some, some uh, substantial collection, would want to seek out grant support or foundation funding or private funding of some, some other sort to, uh, to process it. Um, a number of the things that we, that we have added to the Korean American Digital Archives, which is, which is the base of our, our, our main uh, experience, has been done on our, on our, own, on our own time and our own resources. But, but uh, that's, uh, that's generally for small, uh, small sets of material. For larger things, uh, it's a it's an ongoing process of, of uh, finding the materials on the one hand, and then finding the the, the means to process them uh, on the other. Uh, so to and, and to build off of that, Mr. Lin, I think uh, certainly I think budgets are always a hard thing to work with. What um, what I I think we're hopeful about is that this is a community that has expressed a lot of interest in it, and we're hoping to receive. Um, both financial and um, you know material support from the community, but also I think this is uh, because it is a largely overlooked history. I think we are also hopeful that there are grants that we can uh, apply for, and that there are uh, different types of funding initiatives that we hope can be directed towards some of these efforts. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can I ask a very very selfish question? Yes. Yeah. For a colleague of yours, yes. I know that your um, residency is rotated, rotating, mm -hmm. so you will be rotating to a different institution. Will you be um, in touch with this? Will you still be connected with this, and will you still be involved in developing this further? Yeah, so uh, as Michaela mentioned, the program I'm in is uh, LA Subject Residency Program. So uh, my position actually rotates through four different um, institutions, USC being the first one. Uh, but because USC is my host institution, I'm actually USC affiliated for the rest of the year. Um, so I do plan on definitely, this is a project that's definitely very important to me, both as an archivist and as a Taiwanese American. And I definitely do plan on keeping in touch with Ken um, throughout the course of the year and beyond and to make sure that we continue the, to build off the momentum. So this is definitely not the last you'll hear from us and uh, the last that we'll be working on it. Any other questions? Would you would you categorize all you know the different subjects? How many different areas you you guys want to collect? <coughs> when you go home, you can ship to uh, record. <laughs> this is good for that one. This is good for the other one, etc. It's really hard to to, uh, to to say what sort of material is going to be useful and, uh -huh. and what isn't. It, uh, uh, the, uh, I think the important thing is to be able to, to accurately identify uh, a photograph or a document or, or a, a flyer. You can say where, where, uh, where it came from, what the date was, and who was involved. You give the background to it, then it's more likely that, that a, a researcher or somebody who has, has sparked an interest in, in the subject will come by and, and, will, and will, will come across it and, and be able to to weave it into their their uh, their paper or their their book or, or uh, yeah yeah narrative I, of some sort yeah I, I think definitely what Ken said is that we don't know what people will find interesting in the future um, but I think that's part of the appraisal process for archivists as well is that as we work with the community and people bring things in that's part of uh, that's part of our job is to be able to look at that and say well okay maybe some of these materials are published and they already exist somewhere or maybe this is the type of material we're more focused on. I think uh, that depends just on a case-by-case -case basis as we go out there. I think we do want to make sure that we capture as widely as possible. One of our focuses right now is to capture um, the earlier waves of generation. And so um, the earlier waves of people who came from the 50s and came from the 60s, um, people who came earlier on and started these different clubs and cultural organizations, I think uh, that's one of the focuses we have now just because of time. We want to make sure that we capture that idea because uh, you know as time goes by some of them will disappear <laughs> uh, but uh, you know this Taiwanese uh, community is probably a little different from most other communities because 
in Taiwan, we had a very uh, oppressive government from, from China, and we don't identify with them. And they don't, they, all they do know is to ha get how as much profit from uh, being in Taiwan, squeezed on Taiwanese people as possible. Uh, so, so we have a lot of political things uh, in, uh, involved in Taiwan. So I think this is probably different from most immigrants. Uh, and uh, also, a lot of us go back to get involved in uh, projects in Taiwan. Uh, so, so there is a lot of uh, in interaction between Taiwan and here. I don't know if you guys would be interested in that or not. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Um, I, I, I should say that there's no community that's, that's monolithic in any, in any mm -hmm. sense. And, and um, uh, as a library, as an archive, our interest is in collecting as many aspects of the community as possible. Um, if, you, if you see something that's political in one direction on, on the table here, that, that is certainly not to say that we're promoting necessarily that line or, or another. We're, we're, we're wanting to document everything and let let the uh, uh, the researcher or individuals uh, decide uh, how to interpret this. Yeah, I think to build off of that, um, definitely what we've collected here is a reflection of the things I was able to collect in three months, <laughs> which is not a very uh, long time. And so I think um, as an archive, we do want to be, again, as I say, self-reflective. We do want to be... Um, you know, aware of basically providing as many viewpoints as possible. So, in so far as we're collecting, we want to make sure that for people who identify themselves as Taiwanese American, people who are from Taiwan and come to the U.S., that there's a space here for their story to be told and for their viewpoints to be expressed. Um, definitely, I think that transatlantic um, involvement in terms of political, uh, whether it's political, evangelical, uh, religious, whatever aspect it may take, I think there's a lot of involvement between Taiwanese Americans here and people in Taiwan. And I do want to make sure that uh, that's one of the things we want to highlight is that particular uh, unique history as well. Uh, we have a question in the back. Um, just out of curiosity, for <clears throat> uh, submissions, are you guys hoping for generally a physical submission and then you'll digitize it yourself and, and, and basically give it back to uh, that person or are you welcoming digital submissions? Say somebody from New York who doesn't want to ship over, you know, items. Would you welcome digital submissions on that? Or? We we would prefer to do it ourselves because we, we digitize at a high resolution and um, and put the put the high resolution <coughs> copy in in, uh, in in storage and more or less the, then the then generate off of that the. The, the image that you see on on uh, on the digital library itself, um, but uh, if the only way we can get get materials is by is by collecting something that somebody else has digitized, and, and that, would, that would be the case. Yeah, definitely, I think we would welcome people to contact us, and we can figure out what to do. Uh, in the back of the researcher, I have a question uh, about the. Uh, USC's role here. So, uh, can you explain briefly on uh, what's USC's commitment on this archive here? Uh, are you planning to do some level of digitization of some of the materials, or is it still pending for proposals from these grants? Um, well, broadly, uh, the East Asian Library is part of the Special Collections Division, and special one of the, the areas of that special collections uh, advances is documenting the the variety of communities in Southern California, and this this being this being one more in that in that uh, in that vein for the East Asian Library, um, the, um, uh, the the Chinese collection I think would probably be be the the one that would be directing this. This collection and uh, uh, would would be would be seeking out both the both the materials and the ways to, to digitize it. I, I, I can't think of any collections that we've received as a, as a library as a whole that that 
that we have not been able to to process in some fashion. And uh, um, I think the the emphasis that we would want to put on the the digital materials are the things that are not not otherwise available that are that are uh, unique photographs and documents and whatnot. We're probably less likely to to uh, immediately digitize publications, for instance. Those those can be found. They're already they're already edited and organized in a in a way that was that was uh, sufficient to get them pub published. And so those those are I think less of a priority for for digital preservation. Um, and uh, building off of that as well, I think for USC, part of why we had um, come to this project is because I think USC in general and USC li libraries in particular also it has a value for diversity. And within USC libraries uh, is the Special Collections and Archives. Special Collections and Archives is um, affiliated, like I said, with LAS subjects. So we do have a uh, we do have a goal and a value for documenting LA history that's uh, that's diverse and the different LA histories and Taiwanese Americans being part of that. The other thing is uh, part of the East Asian Library, as I said, there is already the precedence for Korean American and for Japanese American collections. So I think it fits very well under what USC uh, East Asian Library has already been trying to do, the values of special collections and the USC libraries and USC as a whole. So I do think that this is something that can continue to go on. Um, and I see the gentleman here in front had a question. Yes, yeah. Are you planning to have a graduate study involving this awesome volunteer program? Um, of course, the library, library doesn't direct any, any, any of the graduate programs. So, oh. so uh, <coughs> in, a, in a sense, we're, we're building up a collection that we, we expect will, will serve the uh, uh, various departments. There are, there are faculty in the history department who, and uh, sociology and I think at times of anthropology and a few other departments that deal with Asian American issues and and uh, a collection like this will, will be of, of use to them right away I think but as, as for whether it it advances into graduate studies that's beyond our control. I think uh, and to also uh, point out highlight uh, something I actually have been in talks with uh, quite a number of people just through promoting the event and um, there have already, there's a professor in Texas who just reached out to me saying that he wanted to study Taiwanese American organizations. He's very interested in the project. I have other graduate students. There's a graduate student over here in Li Ping Chen uh, who I met too, who, um, people who have just shown interest in the collection that we have. And so I think, uh, I think with the collections will come the research. But I do think that USC can become a research destination for Taiwanese American studies for people who are hoping to look at the material. Do you have a question here? Yeah, I wanted to um, ask you about something you said earlier about kind of defining like um, Chinese American and what you guys are specifically looking for. So mm -hmm. it sounded like, based on your definition, you were talking primarily about people born in Taiwan and that immigrated here and became U.S. citizens. So, and it sounded like you were primarily looking in the period from the, the 50s to the 80s. Is that correct? Um, yes and no. I think just because of time, we're looking at that first generation because we want to make sure that history is captured before it's lost, before it's thrown away, or um, before um, you know people lose that material. So I think that's why we are talking about the, our first focus is to focus on the earlier ways of generation. Certainly, I think second, third, fourth, fifth generation Taiwanese Americans, people who have stopped over somewhere else before or after, I think uh, we are interested in that history too, ultimately. I think that um, it's just for now, I think because of the race against time, we want to focus on that first generation. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that's what I wanted to know, is like what the focus is right now and in terms of like, and, and it sounds like in the future you might be adding other parts to the archive, but for now you want to focus on uh, capturing the... the that, that's our intention, but we're, we're likely to be very opportunistic. <laughs> I mean, one, of the, one of the first projects we're, we're hoping to pursue is the digitization of the... Yeah, my uncle was on the routine here. 